Ready? Set. Brr, brr, ma, ma. The first time a guest has done it with us because we have no guest this week. <laughs> I was like going to say, it's, it was really good. Brr, brr, ma, ma. It was really up. impressive. I feel very warmed up. Do you feel warmed up? Me too. Like the most warm I've ever been. <laughs> it's hot, hot. Hello, and welcome to Outside the Search Bar, the podcast where we try to answer questions without using Google. I'm Jacob Schubach, and I'll turn it over to my sister and co-host, Emily Schubach. Hi, everyone. <laughs> so each week, Jacob and I are going to come prepared with a bunch of questions that we do not know the answers to. So we've each been accumulating them, which is honestly a testament to how little we actually know. I love that you're like, we're accumulating them. <laughs> like, we just got like a personal <laughs> question. <laughs> so many. I write it down on a piece of paper and I just put it in my purse. <laughs> I like roll it out. It's like a really long scroll. <laughs> just right at the bottom. <laughs> love that. Of course, we would be remiss to not take listener questions. So if you have a tough question that you want us to answer on the podcast, send us an email to searchbarpodcast at gmail.com. Or follow us on social at Search Bar Podcast. You guys have been asking some great questions, and we've got a good one today to answer. Yes, we do. Now, as you can tell, we do not have a guest this week. So, Jacob, I will ask you, what's something interesting you search for this week? You didn't even explain why we don't have a guest. Like, I feel like we, we should talk about scheduling it. scheduling conflicts. Oh, I was just going to say- We ran we're... out of friends. <laughs> 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 I was going to lie and say that we're too powerful as podcast hosts and like we didn't need a guest this week. <laughs> but oh, we also I like your did. answer better. <laughs> we ran out of friends to be on the podcast and scheduling, you know, we gotta, gotta get the episodes out. Unrelated, John was like, I guess if you like don't have any more guests, I could do it. <laughs> it's <laughs> so... not that we don't have guests, it's that we just didn't schedule them. Yeah. Yeah. We should. We, we should take this seriously. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to be a guest on the podcast, email us. Honestly, you can just show up. Yeah, we're open and inviting to all folks who want to answer questions. Um, mm-hmm. Anyways, what was the question? <laughs> What's something interesting you searched for this week? Oh, I've been, I was looking through my search history right before this, and I've been searching for like the past five or six days, a variety of things related to Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga mm. music videos, Lady Gaga memes, Lady Gaga fashion moments, the whole nine yards. Primarily because I was doing research for the other podcast, Gay Court, where we did a Lady Gaga episode. And let me tell you, that lady is fascinating. (laughs) Yeah, I agree. Did you learn any fun facts about her? I did. I did learn a lot of fun facts. I learned that she's Italian. (laughs) She's from New York. (laughs) Um, There can be 100 people in a room and 99 of them don't believe in you, but one does. And that's the one that counts. (laughs) cute <laughs> we stand lady gaga we stand lady gaga incredible thank you for sharing you're welcome um would you like to share something interesting that you searched this week sure i know there was something we started to talk about but i also just found in my search history is soda vegan i'm gonna guess no <laughs> so we pick up a farm share every week because we're one of those people so every week we go to this local farm and they just give us whatever vegetables like are most fresh that week oh but it's like it's like a subscription box but yeah so like i think i paid like five hundred dollars and it runs from like may to november and you just get like a whole bag of produce every week it's pretty good Okay. It like comes up to like twenty dollars a week and you definitely get way more than twenty dollars worth of produce. I like that. It's really cute, but they have like a little farm stand and they like sold soda, but they like marketed it as like vegan, no GMO. And I was like, is soda vegan? So I Googled it and the answer is most sodas are in fact vegan. Oh. Isn't that interesting? I'm gonna stay alive on Diet Coke and Diet Coke. Only. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Another thing that always fascinated me is like honey is not considered vegan because it's like made by bees. <laughs> well, I guess like <laughs> right? that makes sense, but like the bees like want to make it. I feel like bees just be doing it. Like they're volunteering. <laughs> their time. It's like, what are they even using the honey for? I don't know. Do bees eat honey? I would assume that they probably eat the honey, but it it's seems like, like they're snack, being selfish yeah, they're if they're not sharing. <laughs> <laughs> A little snacky snack. <laughs> A little sweet treat to keep the girls going. <laughs> a 
Yes, exactly. Did you see that TikTok where it's like, I have to have three drinks near me all at all times? Water to mm-hmm. keep me alive, something fun and fresh to, you know, be a sweet treat and then something caffeinated. I have not. I feel like I'm like water and caffeine. I don't know if I need like something sweet to keep me alive. I only do it after workouts where I'll have like, well, sometimes or it's workouts in the morning. I'll have my water because obviously you need to stay hydrated. I'll get my coffee as a treat because I went to a workout. So I need to have a caramel macchiato with <laughs> two pumps of espresso or whatever. I don't know what the fuck the order is. And a Gatorade because I want a blue Gatorade light blue mm, that's pretty i guess if like after my morning workouts i do water to stay hydrated <laughs> coffee because caffeine and i'll do like a fruit smoothie Ooh, ooh. Mm-hmm. interesting i guess we are hot girls <laughs> love wow. that girls. incredible <laughs> i love how quickly we get derailed when there's not a guest <laughs> right <laughs> i love how quickly we get derailed when there is a guest. <laughs> also fair also fair um, I guess that can take us to our first segment, though, which is called What's Trending? So this ooh, is the, the segment where we discuss the latest Google search trends from the week. And we give context and our thoughts on what people are searching for. We have a lot of thoughts for people who don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Um, we didn't discuss which ones we're going to cover. So I'm going to go to the first one, which is the James Webb telescope saw some really deep space and got some really clear pictures and we talked about this on the first podcast and i had the forward thinking this to be like that telescope is going to see something because we shoot radio waves at it to control it mm-hmm. i saw this tiktok <laughs> about space and it was absolutely yeah. wild that like this is just the starting point mm-hmm. but like conceptually we're going to reach a point where a telescope can see farther than the speed of light can travel. Oh. So we could conceptually look so far that the light from like the start of the universe, like the Big Bang, hasn't traveled that far. So we can see the start of the universe. And it also went on like super far to then say, because it's the start of the universe, like you could literally look in any direction and you can look far enough that you would then see back in time because the light hasn't traveled that far to what existed in the past. So and like, that blew wait, my mind. But we could see Earth in the past? Yeah. I think the TikTok because, line. <laughs> I don't think that's No, true. <laughs> no, because like a scientist like did like the little split thing and was like, let me explain hmm. this. Because like hypotenuse and you're like, yep, I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> I saw an article that was like they set up telescopes all over the earth and they have all of the telescopes looking at the same black hole at once and they're piecing together all of the pieces so that they can get a better picture of a black hole. And then I stopped reading the article because I was like, that's scary. <laughs> that is kind of scary. Mm-hmm. I also saw something. I guess I think John just told me about this and verified source, (laughs) but he was saying that like, so the James Webb telescope didn't just like take a picture. Well, I'm sure it's taking like videos too. It's like a picture, but like it's of a different wave than visible light. So like if you flew out to that galaxy, you wouldn't actually see what it looked like. They altered it to like visible light so we could actually see something, but instead it's like I don't know, radio waves, something else. Probably like infrared or something. Yeah, that sounds legit. Mm -hmm. But that that made me sad because I was like, oh, like imagine just going out into space and seeing this really pretty thing. And it's like not even real. Damn. They photoshopped it. They literally photoshopped it. (laughs) They upped the contrast. They upped the saturation. (laughs) (laughs) They put the, what is it? The lo-fi filter on Instagram on it. Yeah. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> into the shame. world. Um, but that's really interesting about seeing into the past. Do you think that they could somehow, I don't know, make like a an anti-telescope that could see where the light is going and see the future? No. I that, don't know. I feel mm-hmm. like they could. Because it's just like reverse the image, you know? <laughs> <laughs> just the inverse of it. And then you can see the future. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You don't know. That could be right. That could be right. I don't know how you would do 
that. I think you would have to calculate where all of the light particles are going, which I think that calculation would take far too much computing power that we would need a mega supercomputer. But I think those, what do you call them? What's the word where they're like really powerful computers? Oh my God. And they like shoot the beams at each other. A doe. <laughs> <laughs> no, quantum. Quantum. Mm, quantum mechanics. Mm, mm, I think I that's what quantum mechanics is about. I heard about that once. <laughs> yeah, that sounds pretty legit. Um, all right. Well, with that, now that we know more about space, because we always love to learn about space on this podcast, yeah. let's take it over to a listener question. Emily, would you like to read the listener question? I would love to. So this is from our most dedicated listener, Emily W. Sends us a question every week. A true fan. Yeah, honestly, she's more prepared for this podcast than we are. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> So the subject line was question mark, question mark, question mark. The message read, hi, I really need to know how dishwashers work. Please and thank you. I love First of all, love how succinct it is. Like you got straight to the point. No fluff. And I mean, I I I personally (laughs) like a little fluff. I like when the people are like, you guys are such good podcasters, but you know oh i mean yeah like i guess that's cute but i feel like the way i approach emails especially at work i'm just like efficiency <laughs> yeah efficiency like i don't need to know how your weekend went <laughs> do not I mean, tell me I, i'm definitely like an office like personality hire because i'm always just like how was your weekend i do a report on a bi-weekly basis that's called Hayes, which is like updates slays which is things that went well and nays which is things that did not go well Mm. I'm 100% a personality hire, which is fine. I love that for me. <laughs> That's fine. Listen, office gossips are the future CEOs because we know everything about the company. We need to gossip more. You know? Anyways, <laughs> dishwashers. <laughs> okay. So step one, you put the dishes in. Mm-hmm. Step two, you put the little detergent in the thing. I think the mm-hmm. door automatically opens once it's inside. At like the appropriate time. Yeah, I'm sure that's like a little automated trigger that just like boop. Yeah. So I assume it's kind of like a car wash of like, okay, like we'll get everything like wet first and then like we'll add the soap later. Mm -hmm. So I assume there are jets in there that shoot water out. Yeah. I've actually no, I think there was a commercial once where it showed the inside of dishwasher for like a detergent. And it's Mm -hmm. like there's like a stick at the bottom of the dishwasher and the stick has a bunch of little holes in it and the holes and those shoot are like- out yeah the holes shoot out water and that thing is like a propeller and it spins mm-hmm. around and shoots the water all throughout on the inside of the dishwasher so like does the dishwasher ever like fully fill with water no like i don't really i don't really understand the purpose of the propeller cuz it's like, like just spinning sh- and hitting all the angles yeah but just like shoot it at different angles then but I think it's probably most efficient to have it come from all the bottom for like your water hookup. Instead of like a, like an outdoor, sp- like <laughs> a sprinkler. <laughs> that's, that's what I want it to be. Of a dishwasher. I mean, it's basically that, but like one of the ones that like shoots up and then it just it bounces off of things. Yeah, exactly. And then, so then it releases the detergent. But then, like, how does the detergent cover everything? I, hmm. I'm i starting to think that the whole thing fills with water. I don't think that's true. Yeah, but, like, that's have you ever had a dishwasher break? Because there's, like, a lot of water involved in that. No, I don't have a dishwasher. Oh. Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's really terrible. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's rough. Um, no, have you ever had a dishwasher break? I've had some that just like randomly leak water. It's like a good amount of water. I feel like our dishwasher broke when we were children. Mm. No, that was this sink got clogged yeah, with bacon that fat. That was gross. <laughs> that was a rough time. <laughs> <laughs> the sink was just full of water for like two weeks. Yeah. And we just all and looked we had at to do it. Really. Everything in the bathroom sink. <laughs> yeah. We didn't really think that one through. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't me. Nobody wanted to fix it. Put that out there. And that's fair. Mm-hmm. Anyways, dishwashers. I think there's like, I think it fills with water. And then like, that's how the detergent can like mm, dissolve. 
that's the word I was looking for and like be distributed amongst the dishes and like that way the actual propeller is like spinning around the water that has accumulated in the dishwasher instead of just like shooting things off I don't think that's true I disagree I think there's just a propeller and I think it's just shooting shit and the detergent just comes in and it's just (laughs) soapy when it wants to be soapy and then I guess it just drains out the water and then there's heat involved at some point yeah, that is true. Maybe it's like a like a steamer where it like steams yeah. away the germs. That's possible. Mm-hmm. But how does it dry that? Because it's not filling it with water. <laughs> yeah, but like you don't think it could get hot enough that it just like evaporates? I feel like if it filled with water, we would hear a lot more people being like, oh my God, my dishwasher exploded and there's water all over the place. Like, have you ever heard that? Yeah. Okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's like a common like kitchen maintenance. I thing. don't think that's a common thing. I don't think I've ever heard of one person be like, "My dishwasher broke." You don't and, even like, have a dishwasher. I know, but like, <laughs> <laughs> just because I'm not in the culture of uh, dishwashers, whatever. Okay, just should we look it up? <laughs> yeah. My hypothesis is that it fills with water, and then that spinny thing like moves it all around, and then it just drains out, and you add some heat, and then that dries out. What's your hypothesis? Um, my hypothesis is that it's shooting water like a sprinkler, um, and then it uses some steam to like seal the deal. That's fair. So this is from HowStuffWorks.com. Home.HowStuffWorks.com. How do dishwashers work? A dishwasher is a robot that cleans and rinses <laughs> your dishes. I love robots. <laughs> Truly. Okay. A dishwasher adds water heats the water to the appropriate temperature automatically opens the detergent dispenser at the right time shoots the water through spray arms to get the dishes clean drains the dirty water sprays more water on the dishes to rinse them drains itself again and heats the air to dry the dishes off if the user has selected that setting oh so i was right i mean i said i said uh, steam instead of hot air but like that's the same thing close (laughs) okay So there is a sensor that can tell if the water level gets too high Mm. and activates the draining function. But I want to know, like, oh, although dishwashers are watertight, they don't actually fill with water. Just a small basin at the bottom fills up. But did they ever fill with water? Because I feel like early dishwashers would have been like, fill that bitch up. (laughs) Maybe. Early dishwasher. The dishwasher was first invented by Joel Houghton? Houghton? In 1850, wow! it was a wooden box that used a hand-turned wheel to splash water on dirty dishes, and it had scrubbers. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> like, I just picture it as like a crank and like everything is just kind of like rotating. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm actually reading something that says this socialite hated washing dishes so much that she invented the automated dishwasher. Josephine Cochran was the first to use water pressure to clean dishes. Mm. but it seems like some man named joel patented it all right do we feel like we've sufficiently answered emily's question i think so i think she's gonna be really happy i think she's gonna continue to email us perfect <laughs> so our we dedicated love, thing we love that <laughs> thank you Please if anybody listening. else wants to email us too of course you're more than welcome to search bar podcast at gmail.com so jacob would you like to go first sure Um, So my question is also about an appliance, specifically hand dryers in bathrooms. I went to Disneyland the other week and the hand dryers there were very aggressive. And I was like, how are they blowing air so fast and so quickly? They're just like, boom, you want air? (sighs) And it's like, (laughs) (laughs) it's like, Jesus. (laughs) Can you see the cat? (laughs) If you're watching on Spotify or YouTube, <laughs> take a look at your screen. <laughs> <laughs> really good. But I was really wondering like why hand dryers are <laughs> she bit me. <laughs> Emily, let me ask my question about hand dryers. <laughs> no. <laughs> so you were at Disneyland and <laughs> just some the hand dryers were just blowing so fast. And I was like, what's that all about? Was it one of the like slicey ones where you put your hands? Yeah, it was one it? of the slicey ones. Not, Those not are you, wild. No, not the ones that you put like inside it, but it just has like the V 
and you can like put it mm. alongside it. I don't like the ones that you have to put your hands in. It's like too much pressure to not touch things. It's too operation for me. Mm-hmm. I need this to be more like I'm not touching anything. That's fair. Yeah, hand dryers are wild. I also love that there are still some like OG ones that are just like and blow so oh, gently. And yeah, you're the like, ones that are like, oh. <laughs> it's like girl, <laughs> are your hands dry yet? <laughs> And there's no paper towels in, in sight. And you're just yeah. like, God damn it. <laughs> I'll just wipe it on my pants. Right? There's always like salt in the wound when there's like a big trash can as if they have paper towels somewhere, but mm-hmm. there's none. And you're just like. Yeah. That's a, that's a really great hypothesis about why they're blowing so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Well, I mean, I guess it's the same as like a hair dryer too, because those things blow really fast too. But, like, are there fans in those things? Like, does it spin? Like, is that what it is? <laughs> I would assume that something's spinning. <laughs> <laughs> something's got to be spinning in that appliance. <laughs> something's got to be spinning, and then it's got to be, like, pushing it into, like, a cone. Or yeah, like, some like, type a, of, like, like a hose when you put your thumb over it, and, like, yeah. the pressure, like... And it just, like, <laughs> diffuses that shit onto yeah. your hands. But, like, when you look but, at your hands, it, like ripples which is like you know that mm-hmm. shit's going fast yeah i also like get really self-conscious when like i put my hand in front of it and i'm so weak that it like literally moves my hand <laughs> it seems it seems also kind of now that i'm thinking about it like kind of dangerous I blowing mean, pressurized air at me yeah but like it's not that fast <laughs> <laughs> do you think it's like no i was gonna say do you think it's like an oxygen shank in there <laughs> 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 Shooting actual pressurized air at you, but I don't think that's right. I think that would be. I don't think so either. I think it has to be like. I do think there's something with filtering it to like make it go faster. Well, yeah, that seems pretty straightforward. But like, is there just like a spinny fan? Like that seems like it wouldn't create enough pressure. Yeah, I don't think that there's probably a spinny fan in there. There must be like some type of like like an air compressor thing. Do what? Do you have a hair dryer? <laughs> uh, yeah. Does it have a fan in it? I can go look. <laughs> I'll be back. Mm. Do you see anything? <laughs> it doesn't really look like there's a spinny part in it. Try turning it on. <laughs> uh. <laughs> it's blowing in Emily's face. Um, she's not by her microphone, but you know, you can still. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really windy. <laughs> <laughs> I am imploring you to be on Spotify or be on YouTube and watch the video because it's so funny. <laughs> I <don't have> an <laughs> really great science experiment we didn't learn anything from it <laughs> okay okay so i don't think the hair dryer experience was um an answer to the question <laughs> no, it wasn't. um so really we have no idea what happens my hypothesis is that there is some type of motor rotor fan spinning thing that sucks in air compresses it and shoots that shit out really fast. That's the best I've got. My hypothesis would be that there is just some type of like air compressor. Cause I feel like that's way more pressure than just like a <laughs> rotary fan could do. <laughs> Wait, then what is an air compressor? Is an air compressor not have a fan? Yeah. I think it's like the thing that would like pump up tires. That doesn't have a fan. Does it? Maybe on the inside. It just goes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's Google it. <laughs> why do hand dryers? <laughs> why I searched why do hand dryers and it says why do hand dryers so loud? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly our question. <laughs> why do hand dryers blow so fast? Um do hand dryers have poop particles? How fast does air come out of a hand, hand dryer? Facts about hand dryers. What's our source? 
This comes from handydryers.co.uk. <laughs> <laughs> Our international sources are just so helpful. <laughs> I feel like the international um, internet community is more curious about things than the United States, mm-hmm. which is fair. Oh my God, there's a lot of information on this. Do tell. <laughs> hand dryers. Hand dryers fire out air at high speeds that whips water from the hands in around 15 seconds maximum. They're much more energy efficient and dry hands quickly, which means fewer wet hands and less bacteria. Okay. But how- I don't believe that hand dryers dry your hands in 15 seconds max. <laughs> According to handydryers.com, they do. How do hand dryers work? Let's try that. And so we're back on handydryers.co.uk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. It's like opened up one of them and it's like, there's like a motherboard chip in there. So apparently it emits an invisible ray of infrared light, which is the sensor on the hand dryer, that's triggered when an object, in this case your hands, moves into its path, bouncing light back into the sensor. So that's how it comes to life. Um, It immediately sends a signal to the hand dryer circuit to the dryer's motor, telling it to initiate and draw power from its main supply. Okay. It's over to the motor. (laughs) I love whoever wrote this. (laughs) Um, It says older, more traditional models use the hand dryer motor to power a fan which then blew air over heating element and through a wide nozzle that evaporated the water from the hands okay so that's the are your hands dry yet (laughs) (laughs) it says due to higher power consumption this technology is becoming a thing of the past also like between us it just kind of sucked so like yeah (laughs) do the job (laughs) um okay so how do they work today Well, (laughs) engineers have developed new types of dryers, such as blade and high-speed models, which force air through a very narrow nozzle, relying on the resulting air pressure to scrape water from the skin's surface. These models still use a hand dryer motor and a fan, but because no energy is needed to provide heat, the modern method is vastly quicker and makes the hand drying experience less expensive to run. So it's still a fan. I never realized that they weren't heated. Like, I guess that makes sense. Yes, they stopped being heated. We didn't notice, but they did. Yeah, I did not notice that at all, honestly. I guess because it's moving so fast, like it doesn't feel cold. (laughs) (laughs) Guess how much um, the Zabrillo hands in a stainless steel hand dryer is. This is one that you like stick your hands in. And how much it costs? Yeah. $350. $350. Wrong. 550 euros plus VAT, which I don't know what VAT is, but I'm assuming I that's, think that's a tax. tax. <laughs> yeah, like an import tax. Wow. Well, that's pretty expensive. You can get one for up to 882 euros. Would you be mad if I put one, like, if I bought a home and I put one of these hand dryers in? As long as you get a water fountain and put that in too. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob and I, have you gotten it or it's just me i keep what? getting a targeted ad on instagram for one of those like water fountains with the water bottle refillers where it like counts how many water bottles you've saved i got at least like three or four times honestly and i don't know what part of my search history <laughs> said industrial water consumption but... but apparently that's what's on your list um apparently. no i don't really I don't even know what my Instagram ads are. Like, I feel like mine's just like nonsense, like Shein and mm. Wish. And, like, I've also, stuff. I just recently got, um, hey, you should test for fertility and do you want to freeze some eggs? So mm. that one hurt. <laughs> they say it's better the earlier you do it. I mean, yeah, but like, I'm still really young. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still really young and pretty. So like, yeah. slay mama. <laughs> I could probably, like, get pregnant at some point, so. (laughs) Anyways, we've discovered how hand dryers blow so fast, and it's that they're really just trying to shoot air at you real fast. Mm -hmm. And they're more eco-friendly. Yeah, we love that. We do. Emily, I feel like we've sufficiently answered my question, which means it's your turn to ask a question. So my question is, where do CAPTCHA tests get their images from? They always seem so random. Mm -hmm. And like, I always had the thought of like, imagine you're just doing CAPTCHA tests and you're like, wait, that's my street. That's my stoplight right there. (laughs) 
<laughs> you can see it and say, I'm going to know a lot about this CAPTCHA and I'm really going to succeed on this. Where's the traffic light? Um, my hypothesis is that, have you seen those like doll E generations that have been going around on Twitter? No. What is that? It's like this artificial intelligence where you can type in like Kirby fighting Charlie XCX WWE and it'll automatically like use images from the internet and create an image of Kirby fighting Charlie XCX in the WWE. And people wow. have been like coming up with these like random generations. So I wonder if they're just like artificially generated images that like, like don't actually exist anywhere. The internet? Oh. Where it's no, it's like they just like collect a bunch of images of traffic lights and like have some artificial intelligence make an image out of those pictures and like combine sounds... multiple images because they're always fucking blurry. You can never really see what's going on. And like that could be a possibility. That's true. Have you also seen related to that the like this is not a person.com? I think is what it is. Yes. There's an Instagram that account one's for it. Wild. There's an Instagram one for it. That <laughs> like it's like people of new york city it's like humans of new york but they like did it through an artificial intelligence and the captions are always like wild they're like i went to the bodega (laughs) and i set it on fire (laughs) and it's like oh my (laughs) god like no new york are you okay we do not condone violence no we do not (laughs) but the artificial intelligence is like let's (laughs) fuck some shit up today (laughs) i think I guess my original thought was like they just like scraped Google images and like took random ones. But do you think Google doesn't Google copyright Google Maps? Like, isn't there like a little copyright on Google Maps when you like look through the like street view and it's like you can only use this for personal use or something? That sounds about right. But I could also see like business to business being like, <laughs> I'm gonna take a screenshot anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually a little blurry so you don't know (laughs) I was just thinking about that where it's like I think it's so beautiful that you can see like a Getty image that's like $300 and you can just tap and hold it and save it (laughs) (laughs) like there's something like really beautiful about doing that yeah not that I would do that (laughs) legally I would never stealing is bad I never save any images unless I have all of the licensing rights to it Mm mm-hmm Mm-hmm. I only take my own photos. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I wonder what the legality of like, if I take a picture of your picture, is it my picture? Probably. Yeah, right. <laughs> what were we talking about? Captcha tests. Captcha where the tests. pictures come from. You know which captcha tests I like? I like the ones where you had to take the puzzle piece and you had to use a little slider to line the puzzle piece up. That one's really That fun. one's really, yeah, I do like that one. <laughs> I don't like the ones where you have to click the fucking crosswalks. No. Those stress me out. And like, I can never tell because sometimes I'll get like multiple in a row. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, did I just fail the first one? Or is this like a double layer of security? (laughs) I think it's a double layer of security, but it's probably that you did it wrong. Like, yeah, I always get really self-conscious about that. I wish that they had ones where it was like, you know, those like little like three by three tile things that used to like slide and try and like make a picture of a toucan or whatever. Mm-hmm. I liked those. I wish they had those as CAPTCHA tests. A little difficult, but you know. Like, yeah, like one that's a lot of work and I was never good at them. <laughs> I was always really good at them. Two, I feel like you could easily like code a robot to be able to solve that. Maybe. Also, if they're using, like, computers and artificial intelligence to generate these photos, like, how do we not have the artificial intelligence to beat a CAPTCHA test? Yeah, like, when there's, like, ones where it's, like, click to prove you're not a robot, and, like, that's it. I'm, like, but, like, you could, <laughs> you could do that. Like, you could okay, just, like, have like... the thing clicking around and seeing whatever it's, like. Yeah. It's not, like, it's hard. I mean, they make those things for your mouse, for, like, people who, like, work from home and, like, oh, oh yeah, just, yeah. like, constantly moving. <laughs> I'm on Slack right now. It's fine. Where I think John did this once. He might be embarrassed that I'm telling this story, so we might have to cut this later. But he like coded this, like he he coded something on his computer, and like he was doing this like cookie clicker game. <laughs> he just like, he, like, he like coded it to like click infinitely fast. And he was like in some competition with his cousins. It wasn't like website cookies. It was like a game. About it was like yeah like you click the cookie to like eat it or something. <laughs> like, he just wrote some code to like 
tell the computer to click really fast and just like walked away he was in a competition with his cousins for some reason and they're like john how are you so good at this fascinating i love the so you can in fact code a computer to click (laughs) solved it (laughs) um that doesn't really answer the question of where are the captcha images from but i'm gonna assume that like either they're artificially intelligence generated and or what you said of like using google maps yeah, and maybe not even Google Maps, but just, like, scrape the internet for, like, photos that don't have copyright. Or, like, there's some guy who's just walking around <laughs> taking pictures of traffic lights. Right, and, like, realistically, how many different tests are there? I mean, it's not like I, like, every time I've done it, I don't think I've ever seen, like, repetition where I'm like, oh, I know this one, you know? Yeah, but, like, do you think you would recognize a picture of some random street light? I think if I saw it multiple times, Maybe. I don't know. I don't know if I would. Is there like a website that you can play CAPTCHA test? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. It's like a game. CAPTCHA test.com. CAPTCHA test for fun. Oh, I found it. Yeah. Crazy CAPTCHAs by Willie G <laughs> on Sporkle. Oh my God. I used to play Sporkle all the time. Oh, this is one where it's like type the following. It says snowflakes. Mine also says snowflakes. Oh, <laughs> well, we're on the same thing probably. Wow. Uh, how do I enter the solution? Did yours go for snowflake? Yeah, I'm winning. What does a great white shark eat? Oh, Anything? snowflakes. I wrote slow flakes. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a robot? <laughs> I'm a robot. Okay, we'll play that later. We'll play that. We're hosting a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, um. <laughs> I think they just scrape the internet and steal, honestly. Okay, great. Let's Google it. Where do captcha images come from okay there's some really like clickbaity titles so number one why captcha pictures are so unbearably depressing (laughs) oh damn mentalfloss.com has an article said the surprisingly devious history of captcha herbo also has the surprising secrets behind those captcha images Wow, these are really good. I'm going to do the surprisingly devious history of CAPTCHA. You win. This is from mentalfloss.com, written by Miss Kate Horowitz in 2016. Okay, so the word CAPTCHA, first of all, is an acronym for Completely Automated Public Turing Test to Tell Computers and Humans Apart. Wow. Developed in the early 2000s by engineers at Carnegie Mellon University. Okay. Wow. So after this started, there was a bunch of spam sponsored capture farms where, like, especially in poor countries, they would offer workers money to solve capture tests. Oh. So CAPTCHA asked users to translate images of real words and numbers taken from archival texts. So the smeary ink and damaged paper makes some words hard to read. Computers can't read it, but humans still can. When you say archival text, does that mean they were scanning things in? They started with the archives of the New York Times, then sold the technology to Google, who began using it to transcribe old books. Oh. But I want, like, the picture one. Okay, a 2014 Google analysis found that artificial intelligence could craft even the most complex CAPTCHA and recaptcha images with 99.8% accuracy. (laughs) Slay mama. So if you ever get a CAPTCHA that's, like, a word, that means it's, like, not as secure as it could be. I mean, 99.8% not secure. Yeah. I guess you don't really see letter CAPTCHAs anymore. Yeah, you really don't. Yeah. Yeah, originally came from books. Yeah, but where are they now? Okay, Reddit. Where do CAPTCHA images come from? (laughs) Slay Reddit. Google Street View. Really? So it looks like CAPTCHA was purchased by Google. Oh. So let's Google that. Does Google own CAPTCHA? Yes. Wow. So, wow. Do you think they get like a little kickback every time someone puts that on a website? Probably. Probably. Their mind. (laughs) The way they've monetized the, the internet fascinating google charges one dollar per one thousand requests for your capture that's a lot like if you're like facebook i guess you recapture 
Uh, is reCAPTCHA different than CAPTCHA? CAPTCHA is the human validation test, usually the blurry squiggly letters that need to be deciphered. ReCAPTCHA is a reverse CAPTCHA. The same test used not only to prevent spam, but to help in the book digitization process. What? Okay. So I think CAPTCHA is random letters, but ReCAPTCHA is the actual picture start. Oh, got it. Yeah, I'm reading an article that says that they were from Google's Waymo vehicle, which is the vehicle that did all of the mapping for Google Maps. Um, and that's why they're always at odd angles and like have weird images. Interesting. A couple, maybe like a month ago, I saw the Google van. And instead of going to work, I just followed it around, hoping that I would <laughs> be in the picture at some point. <laughs> so, How long did you follow it for? Probably like a good like 10, 15 minutes. Did you look and see if you're on there? No, actually I haven't. I wonder how long it takes them to like upload or update the, or like when they film it to like get it in approved by legal to like putting it out onto the Google website. Oh, you think it has to go through legal? Maybe. that makes sense. But I don't know. There's always weird stuff that people find. That is true. A lot of the like things that get blurred are like found by users, but I feel like they should like at least do like their due diligence and be like, did it drive past any sirens? <laughs> right. Because I feel like if it was driving past sirens, like that might be a thing to like take a look at. I'll look into it and let you know. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Do you feel like we've sufficiently answered your questions of why or where do the capture images come from? Yeah, I think the answer is that Google is a bigger monopoly than I ever realized. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we don't use it here, except for when we need answers. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Except for the entire thing. <laughs> uh, slay. <laughs> the entire premise is we don't use Google, but also we only use Google. Yes, exactly. That's the whole thing. We should use Bing sometimes. A special Bing episode. Oh, we should. Um, all right. So that was our 11th episode. Um, I feel like we did a great job. Um, and if you guys enjoyed that, be sure to find us on social at Search Bar Podcast. And my handle is I got Shubak, I G O T S C H U P B A C H across all platforms. And if you have a question that you would like us to try to answer in the podcast, you can email us at searchbarpodcast at gmail.com. Until next time, happy searching. Slay. Slay. <laughs> Outside the Search Bar is a perfectly done toast podcast production.